There we go. All right, we are live and we are both very excited. <laughs> we're here talking and laughing already. So we're like, Woo! Um, so this is Christine Smart and she is a brand new author. She is the author of The Rings That Sing. And um, I'm gonna be talking to her today about her journey as an author, about her book, all that fabulous stuff. Um, and in case you don't know me, and you're somehow on my feed, um, I'm Corey Walmsley. I'm the CEO of Aurora Corialis Publishing. And we work with people like Christine who write children's books. We also work with uh, a lot of business owners and speakers to help them get their stories out and make a big impact on the world. Um, and Christine's book is actually the first children's book we've done. Um, and the reason that I decided to start doing children's books because my focus was on business books is that Christine sent me this beautiful story and I, I have little ones myself and I looked at it and just said, you know what, this is a message that kids absolutely need in their lives. So um, who am I to turn this away? We have to do this. We're going to start doing children's books now. So thank you, Christine, for being the one to kick that off and uh, get me started on that. And I keep looking down because I'm pulling up Facebook on my phone so I can answer any questions um, or relay questions to Christine. So I am going to turn it over to her now and let her introduce herself. Um, hello, um, Facebook world. <laughs> I am Christine Smart. Um, I live in Dallas, Texas, and um, I am a high school English teacher and have been an English teacher for many years now, about almost 10 years. Um, and um, yeah, like I've been just, I've, I think I've, I've grown up in Dallas. I um, went to school here. I mean, I, hmm, what else can I tell you? <laughs> tell me. <laughs> um, well, you, you mentioned that you're an English teacher and yes. I was kind of wondering, um, you know, I, I was an English major, you know, so we have sort of a similar background here. Yes. Um, so I grew up writing and stuff, you know, did you grow up writing? Did you grow up, you know, thinking, oh, I'm going to be an author someday? You know, I, I think at a younger age, I said, oh, you know, I, I want to, I want to be a big deal. And I want to, you know, and I want to write, but I always wrote, I always would write things like I wrote about myself or just what I was going through or um, maybe topics that I was interested, in. you know, just, I always wrote. And I always thought it sounded good, but I was like, who wants to read my stuff? You know, never really, never really had that um, push, that motivation in me um, to do it. And I think I was also focused on um, more of the fame than the message, you okay. know, like more of like what it would give me instead of what I can give to it. And so I feel like it's a, it, it made it, it makes a huge difference, I, I think, to, to have that motivation. And so you know, now it's a little different, and but I've always written. I've, I I can go back and see him. Uh, yeah, just always writing about something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. I I did the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So so uh, what inspired you to write the rings that sing? Well, when I was actually, it's funny when I I look back on it because when I was in college, I had a friend who. Um, one day I'm not, hopefully I get to tell him that it was kind of inspired by him, <laughs> but like he was, he was just an amazing uh, musician, just this amazing musician. And I would watch him like play and I was like, wow, like who play, like that's pretty amazing to watch that. Mm -hmm. And it got me kind of thinking about how people in their element, you know, in, in, in the thing that they are the best at their gift. Um, it got me kind of thinking about like how really just how beautiful it is and how neat and how natural it comes. And, um, and it kind of motivated me to, to write about that gift that can't be hidden in, yeah. in a person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really cool. And I love that you, you pulled that into the character in the book, Gemma too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. So I'm curious too, did you have a talent growing up that, uh, you know, you need a little help being more confident with it, um, kind of the way that Gemma is in the book? Um, I've always, I've always been creative. 
I've always been, you know, with painting or drawing or, I, I mean, I'm not that good at drawing, but I would say painting more. <laughs> but okay. I've always, but um, really funny enough, and I, I'm seeing where it all pulls together is like, I'm thinking about this, is um, I actually, when I was, I don't know what, how old I was, but I got a guitar and I actually tried to play the guitar and taught myself chords and tried to, you know, tried to play and I could do it. Yeah. But I was never like really, really good, but I was, right. I tried and I worked hard to like get better, but I didn't continue yeah. with it, but I definitely, I had to have the confidence to like, you know, do it. And then I, I, I was asked at school to play it, you know, a, a search, like a church service, or I was asked yeah. uh, to do stuff and it was, and even though I get stuck in like a chord, but I, I at least tried, <laughs> yeah. at least went out there, but I was very, I was like, I don't know if I'm good enough to do this, but I'm going to try it. So, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's interesting to think about the difference between, like, I, I grew up playing instruments too, but it was never like, this is my gift. So yeah, I know. I think it's interesting <laughs> to look at, um, like, the difference between that, like, how we have to, like, sit and learn, like, when I was playing piano or trumpet, um, I would have to be like, okay, you know, this is the sound that it sounds like, because like with the trumpet, um, you could have all your, all your valves up and mm -hmm. be blowing and you could make like 10 different sounds. So you had to know which note you were hitting. Mm -hmm. um, it was never like, oh, this is innate and this makes sense to me. So it's very yeah. interesting to think about like the difference between that and like our gift of writing and to be able to sit down and mm -hmm. just open up and let it flow. And yeah. like reading uh, when I first read the rings that saying it was one of those like oh this is a gifted writer okay <laughs> this is a really good story like you could just tell like this is your gift and I love that you're talking about uh, Gemma's innate gift in that book it, mm -hmm. it was just such a such a neat little like ooh, give me tingles yeah I know. Um, <laughs> um so yeah I was wondering too like why do you feel like it's important for kids to read about Gemma's experience um with her talent I think that there's a lot of different messages in our world today. <laughs> and a lot of them are, are just, I mean, they're just, they're not that great. I mean, there's some that are great, I'm sure. Um, mm -hmm. But a lot of them are mixed. And I think that there's, a, there's, you know, being a teacher, I see this, you know, the biggest, the biggest issue that the kids have like testing or working is, I believe I can do this. Mm -hmm. I believe it in myself, you know, and I think mm -hmm. that knowing that I have some kids who are very talented who are like, oh, it's no big deal. And I said, it is a big deal. You know, like you should yeah. really nurture that gift, you know, and I think that it's just not something that you, you know, hear anymore. It's like, you know, you could buy a gift. Apparently <laughs> you can yeah. do anything, <laughs> you, right. can, you know, you can just get it made. You can do this. And, and it's like, but uh, you don't have to be talented it's like no there is talent out there there's still like there's still and it and it's something that I think that kids need to be encouraged at a young age to remember like believe in yourself and you can dream whatever you want you can be whatever you want and it doesn't matter what it is so and that's a really important message yeah yeah I think it is too yeah um, <laughs> something that I talk to my kids about all the time is like you know I, I'm glad you like this. You know, I'm, I'm hoping that you continue to practice this. Right. <laughs> um, of course, mine are <laughs> elementary school. So sometimes it's like, boo, leave me alone. <laughs> but yeah. I, I teach I, high school. So it's all boo, leave me alone. <laughs> yeah. I imagine you get a lot of that too. <laughs> but yeah, it is. It, and I think, um, you know, to start kids out that young and tell them and, you know, make sure that it builds clear through, um, I think we're around the same age and like growing up, I don't remember being told like, Hey, you know, believe in yourself and nurture your gifts. Mm -hmm. It was always like, Oh, you're really smart or, Oh, you're really good at this. And then there was no like anything else. And it was like, Oh, okay. Well that person said it. So it must be true. And no, right. like I believe it and know it in my heart. So that's how I know it's true. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or just, you see it come out on paper. Or you see it come out on a canvas. You see it come out in yeah. different ways. And it's easy, you know, I remember being in high school and it was really easy to look at kids and say, oh, I guess you can be an artist, but you're not going to make any money, you know? <laughs> yes. Yeah. You can be a writer, but you're going to be poor, you know, like you could be, yeah. 
you know, and, and, um, and I admire the people who fought for their talent, you know, like I admire yeah. those people who are like, I'm going to do this, you know, yeah. money or not. And like, I think that's great. And they found yeah. a way to make it a part of their lives. Yeah. And you brought up a really interesting point too. Um, I, I know there have been times in my life where I've been like, oh, I'm sad that my talent is writing and you know, <laughs> the case for writing. And really to look at it from that perspective is sad. <laughs> it's so, <laughs> um, and, you know, looking back at some of the people I went to high school with, you know, there were obviously some people who went out and they were like, oh, I'm going to be a musician or whatever. And they ended up changing their path. But I feel like at, at least when we were growing up, it, it was almost like we made ourselves wrong to do that. It yeah. wasn't like, oh, we're pursuing this and it's okay to change what we want to do. Um, mm -hmm. And then I, I also went to school with um, the guy who wrote and sung the Paw Patrol theme and he's um, working in LA as a musician. So it's like, I, I want to see more awesome. of that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I want to see more of that kind of stuff out there. That's like, believe in your gift and nurture it all the way until, you know, you get where you want to be. Right. So yeah. that's awesome. <laughs> and it's not often I get to bring up Paw Patrol on a, <laughs> on a uh, live stream. That was free advertisement, right? <laughs> <There you go. laughs> um, yeah. So back to the book. That's okay. Um, this is good. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Well, what do you think was the biggest challenge with getting this book out? Um, I think it's just, I think it was me like believing that I could do it, you know, yeah. um, and, you know, finding, obviously it was, it was, you know, I, I prayed and I, you know, at, you know, I was just like, you know, kind of like send me a sign, you know, <laughs> kind yeah. Of, yeah. and, um, and, uh, you know, led me to somebody you've worked with. So it was, it was really, it was cool how it worked out. And I said, well, I'll just give it a shot and, um, I might as well. And it was, it was hard because I was, it was very vulnerable. So I think it was, yeah. I think that was the biggest challenge was just being vulnerable and saying, read this, but don't critique me. You know, like, <laughs> like yeah. I was, I was a little nervous about that. That was probably one of my biggest like fears in the yeah. whole process. Um, I figured you all knew what you were doing. So in the process, <laughs> so I figured the illustration and everything would just yeah. fall into place. So I just kind of said, you know, this is what supposed to get published like it'll be fine and if not then she'll give it back to me and it'll have red marks on it but I'll be okay you know <laughs> so so you have red mark trauma as well <laughs> that's funny it's like, um, I don't know if it's gonna be grammar or what but <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I I feel like every author has that and um so in my own career, I had to overcome that too. Um, I worked as a writer for the government for 10 years oh, wow. and my mentor there, um, she's, she actually has her own business now and they do um, a lot of writing for businesses and she was just phenomenal, but I would cringe anytime I had to send her something because I knew it was coming back bloody and I would be sitting there like, oh my God, I did so badly. I suck as a writer. And it took me probably a good six, seven, eight years before I finally went, she's helping me. She's my ally. And she's telling me, hey, this is fine, but I would change it to this. And teaching me along the way. And that was something that I had to undo myself. And then, you know, working with authors too, like it's something that I have to say, like, I know that your English teacher gave you a paper and you felt like you were wrong. <laughs> That's not what red marks mean. Red marks don't mean you're wrong. And I, I feel like that kind of gets in the way of, for a lot of writers too. And I think it was, it was something that like, I never really shared a lot of my writing growing yeah. up. Like I would keep a lot, you know, to myself, not knowing if I thought it sounded cool, but I, you know, like, yeah. but um, not really knowing if it was great. When I was in high school, I, I wrote this poem. I don't even remember where it is, but I, I wrote a poem and I, it was actually published in their like review that they do uh, uh -huh. at my school or at my high school. And so that was like a big, it was very healing. It was a healing poem, <laughs> it was yeah. one of those. but it was very good for me to like, uh, see that to see those little those little hurdles being jumped over to like get to a certain point like this so that's really cool I, I think it's interesting that you 
kind of ended up writing about the thing that you were struggling with yourself too. The confidence. Yeah. 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 That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> that makes it an interesting journey. Yeah. Um, okay. So, um, so I did want to know too, um, what would you tell somebody else who's thinking about writing a children's book and they just don't know where to start? What would you tell them to start with? First, I'd tell them to write from experience, like never, just like I tell my students, like don't write about yeah. what you don't know, write about what you know. <laughs> yeah. um, that's number one. And just what inspires you. And, um, and if you're, and if, and just start writing. I think the first, I always, <clears throat> excuse me, I always tell my students, just start writing, you know, mm -hmm. like don't, you know, they sit there and they just they focus, they focus. It's like, I want to write a children's book. I want to write, or I want to do this, you know, mm -hmm. just start writing and see what comes out of you, mm -hmm. you know, and okay. see what, um, and see what, what comes out of you. Cause then you can go back and say, oh, that's an idea. Or maybe that's an idea, you know, or, yeah. um, that's what I would say is just, just just write, you know, write about what you really love and what you know, and, and what, what, you know, like I said, what inspires you and then take a chance on yourself. You know, I think that's a big part of it because I did, you know, it, it's, it's, it's interesting because <clears throat> finding kind of rediscovering this book in my life was, was, uh, my father passed away last year and he, um, I, and, and my mom was cleaning up the house and she found this, Hey, this beautiful story. And I said, she's like, you need to read this again because you need to take a chance on this again and see what it is, you know? And I said, okay. And I read it and I started crying because I was like, oh my gosh, like I, I love this story. Yeah. And, you know, the beautiful part is that, and I connect it with my dad is the fact that he, he always took risks, you know, all his kids took risks. Like we yeah. all take risks on our, you know, he always did stuff. It was some good and some bad, but <laughs> But he did, and it inspired me to to kind of do the same, you know. So take a risk on yourself and see what comes from it, because you're not going to lose in yeah. anything. So yeah, I think it's important to not just have that belief in yourself and you know try it, but mm -hmm. to understand that you have nothing to lose. I I think that's really important. And if you don't put yourself out there, then nobody's going to come discover you. <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be a stepping stone, you know, it's yeah. going to be something. And I think that was the scary part was like, what if I do get discovered? What happens? You know, yeah. <laughs> you know, what happens next? You know, and I, and I, yeah. and I'm not supposed to know. So I'm just, you know, we'll see yeah. what comes. So. Yeah. Well, I think that's part of the fun too, is to, you know, see where the adventure takes you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I, I, I think it's important too, for authors to realize that, they don't have to do it alone. <laughs> um, <Yes. laughs> like you're not over there going, all right, well, I guess I'll do this. And, um, oh, whoops, that wasn't right. Now I'll do this. Like you, you know, you're working with us. We have people that we can reach out to if all of a sudden things get crazy. Like <laughs> we, you know, we're working with you. We're working with um, other authors and like making sure that they end up on the path where they want to be. So mm -hmm. um, I think that's another fear that authors have is that they're going to be standing there like, you know, with all these books in their hand. Like <laughs> yeah, like, I don't know what to do with all these books. Where, what do I do? Here, you take some. Um, <laughs> yeah, these out. I don't know. Yeah, it. I think it gets scary because it's such an unknown journey. So yeah. you really hit the nail on the head there. Mm -hmm. But yeah. it's but it, I guess that's the fun of it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's, I think there is fun in it in some ways. Like it's, it's, you know, my husband or other people are like, oh, this is a published author now. And I go, okay. <laughs> you know, that's kind of, it's a new title I have, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so it's a, yeah. it's a new, it's a new journey. It's a, it's a very different, it's, a, it's not a place I ever saw myself in, you know, in reality, in my head, I was a, you know, you know, best-selling author, but in reality, yeah. um, we'll see what happens. So <laughs> <laughs> we will see. Um, and I, I think that's an important thing too, is to know, like in your head, I think there's a quote by an actor that was like, oh, I knew I was an A-list actor long before anybody else did. Like you have to have that in your head and say, mm -hmm. this is what I am and I'm going to do it until everyone else knows it too. Mm -hmm. So that's cool. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. So. 
And I love that you've been, um, <laughs> you've been sending me emails like, oh, this, this is happening now. This is happening now. I'm in this magazine. And <laughs> it, it's so exciting that all these things are happening and we're getting this book out. So yeah. I am overjoyed and I'm really glad that you decided to work with us on this because oh, and I'm, a, and I am glad amazing. that I worked with you all because it's, it's been a really awesome experience. So thank you. For <laughs> yes, for sure. Awesome. Well, was there anything else that you wanted to share about the book? I'm, I'm not seeing any questions here. So, um, no, I mean, go out and buy it, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's a great, yeah, it's a great gift for whoever, you know, keep it in your house for when you have grandkids, who knows, you know, but like, <laughs> it's a great, it's a great story. And yeah, it is. It needs to be a beautiful shared. story. Um, it's a beautiful story. It's got beautiful illustrations. Oh and... my gosh. Somebody actually <laughs> contacted me just yeah. about the illustrations because they're an artist and oh. they sketch and they do stuff. And, and he was like, can I please have her information? I really like want to contact her and know her technique and all this other stuff. And I'm like, sure. You know, <laughs> I'm like, so I sent her an email. I sent an e her email to him. And so it's just, who knows what comes of it, but it's, yeah. it's uh, and for everybody involved, but she did such an amazing job. Oh, everybody, the, the layout, like it was, it's awesome. I'm excited. Yay. <laughs> well, I'm going to put the link in the comments that way um, anybody who wants to grab this book can um, again it's about a little girl discovering or uh, learning how to embrace her innate gifts and it's so cute creative and beautiful and you know kids ages probably like four to eight is really the sweet spot for this one mm -hmm. so yay. yay thank you Christine for joining me today and talking about your book yes and um, thank you, you for know, having me you're welcome. Um, uh -huh. Hopefully we'll be back, you know, a few months from now and chat about it again and see where things are going yeah, and yeah. Uh, yeah, all kinds of exciting stuff. So if you are watching us and you have questions about book or about publishing, um, please just drop a note in the comments and we will take care of it. So have a good night.